I didn't know this until later in life, but I wasn't the planned pregnancy. My parents barely knew each other when they got pregnant with me. They weren't married when I was born, which is, was a source of shame for some of my family members. They divorced when I was six months old. My mom was a single mother living on a very tight budget. This undoubtedly had an impact on my development in my first year of life. After I was born, I lived with my mom and saw my dad twice a week, but they were both struggling with some depression, my mom with chronic fatigue syndrome when I was little. I think this contributed to me having an insecure attachment style. While they both struggled with mental and physical illness when I was little, I did get a lot of good care from my parents. My mom was a stay-at-home mom, so I got lots of attention when she wasn't too tired to play with or teach me. I lived in a safe neighborhood and played nightly with the other kids around. One story that my mom likes to tell about me is the time that I put my guinea pig inside an empty wrapping paper roll, covered both ends with my hands, and turned it upside down each way like a rain stick. My mom heard the scrabbling of the claws on the cardboard from the other room and had to come explain to me that my guinea pig probably didn't like that very much. There was some moral development there for sure, being able to put myself in the shoes of another and imagine how they must feel. This story shows a lack of perspective teaching, taking, which is characteristic of Piaget's pre-operational stage, which aligns with the age I was at the time, which was somewhere around four. Everyone in my family loves to travel, and I am no exception. I've been to several places in South America, most of Europe, Southeast Asia, of course the United States and Canada, as well as Morocco. I think that having family in the Netherlands and learning about European culture, as well as traveling to less developed countries, had an influence on me because I realized that even though we have differences of culture and values, we are really the same and humans are humans. We need to have compassion for everyone. In high school, I started to get into a bit of trouble. I started partying, smoking weed and drinking and having casual sex. Studies have shown that trying substances early in life is a significant risk factor for developing substance abuse issues later. Early adolescent substance use dramatically increases the risk of lifelong substance use disorder. Early substance use interferes with ongoing neurodevelopment and induces neurobiological changes that further augment the risk of substance use disorder. I went to college at the University of Florida. I wanted a large state school for the classic American college experience, and also staying in state afforded me a full ride scholarship. I studied psychology, but what influenced me even more than my courses was leading outdoor education trips for the outdoor rec program at my college. There I learned leadership skills, professionalism, how to lead a meeting, how to schedule events, and how to market. Both my parents are artists, and art is very important to me as well. I'm a painter, dancer, gardener, cook, videographer, and crafter. My partner and I don't intend to have human children of our own but I do intend to be a great auntie to friends' children and children of my cousins. Instead, I want to birth other projects like communities and art projects, including collaborative storytelling and role-playing games. After college, I did a variety of things over the next 10 years, including living at a yoga center, living at a Zen monastery, studying permaculture, living at a commune, teaching English in Thailand, cooking at retreat centers, teaching outdoor recreation to school kids in California, being a yoga teacher, a life coach, working on a weed trimming ranch, and most recently until starting this program, I have been making psychedelic art love porn with my partner. This involves using an artificial intelligence to overlay artistic styles on sexy videos. We were featured in the nationally touring Hump Amateur Porn Festival, as well as the Seattle Erotic Arts Festival. 
When I was 29, I had my first manic episode, but I didn't realize at the time that I had bipolar. I had all the symptoms without knowing that they clustered as a bipolar diagnosis. I read some books and decided to see a psychiatrist. I was diagnosed at 30 and got on some meds that have really helped stabilize my mood cycles. I think it's really important to share about mental health challenges because it can reduce stigma and allow people to understand you better. I think of my bipolar as a disposition, which I prefer to call it instead of disorder. I think of it as a superpower. I can enter periods of intense darkness and know that on the other side there's going to be some light and that I can harness the superpowers of mania, which for me are charm, charisma, fluency with words, facility with storytelling, increased creativity, and lots of interesting ideas. Currently, I'm enrolled in the Marriage and Family Therapy program, though I prefer to call it Couple and Family Therapy because not everyone wants to get married these days at Regis University. I'm also working on renovating the house that my partner and I live in to get it ready for Airbnb. I'm also concurrently enrolled in a program called Sex Catalyst Academy, which is for sex-positive leaders, teachers, facilitators, and healers to learn how to be better at what we do and spread sex positivity in the world. I have a lot of experience with psychedelics, both personally and guiding and sitting for others. My ultimate dream job in the future, when it's legal, is to do psychedelic-assisted sexual therapy and healing ceremonies.